Um, and yeah, let's let's go ahead and get started. So we'll begin with Speller 16, Dharani Nanda Kumar. Your word is ciliopathy. Uh, can you say it one more time? Ciliopathy. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one, ciliopathy. Um, does this come from the word cilia, meaning hat, hair? Um, may I have the definition? Ciliopathy means any inherited disease such as the polycystic kidney diseases caused by abnormal, abnormal function or formation of cells encircling the inner surface of the eye. Ciliopathy. Um, ciliopathy. Am I saying this correctly? Sounds right. Ciliopathy. E I L I O P A T H Y. Ciliopathy. Okay, next up is speller number 19. Okay, your word is alpha vein. Um, can you repeat the word? Alpha vein. Alpha vein, can I have all the information? The word can be pronounced alpha vein, alvein, alpha vein, alvein. It's an adjective. It comes from a Swedish name, and it means characteristic of a transverse electromagnetic wave that propagates along the lines of force in the magnetized plasma. The sentence alpha. is, the alpha vein wave is produced by coupling forces between the magnetic field and highly conductive flu fluid. Alpha vein. A-L-F-V-E-N. Alpha vein. That is correct. Thank you. Next up is speller number 38. Your word is triduum. Triduum, may I have the definition please? Triduum means a term of three days, especially a period of three days observance in the Roman Catholic Church. Triduum, may I have the language of origin please? The word comes from Latin. Um, does this have the Latin tri meaning three? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, triduum. T R I D U U M. Triduum. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller number 41. Okay. Your word is wapati. <laughs> Could you repeat that? Yes, wapati. Oh, wapati. May I have the definition? Wapati means a large North American deer, the male of which has large spreading antlers. Wapati. What is the language of origin? The word comes from Algonqui, Algonquian or Cree from Shawnee. Right. Uh, wapati. May I have all the information? The word can be pronounced wapati, wapati. Wapati, 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 Wapati. It's a noun. The word is Algonquian or Cree from Shawnee. And it means a large North American deer, the male of which has large spreading antlers. The sentence is, Jason spotted a Wapati wandering up in the high meadows. Wapati. Wapati, Wapati. W-A-P-I-T-I, Wapati. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller number 49. Your word is ubiquinone. 
Ubiquinone. May I have all the information, please? The word can be pronounced ubiquinone, ubiquinone, ubiquinone. Um, it's a noun. It means it comes from a blend of Latin and English words, and it means any of a class of compounds that occur in all living cells and function as an electron carrier agent in cell respiration. The sentence is, plant mitochondria contain ubiquinone in small quantities. Ubiquinone. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's ubiquinone, ubiquinone, ubiquinone. Ubiquinone. Can I have the language of origin again? The word comes from a blend of Latin and English words. Ubiquinone. U, B, I, Q, U, I, N, O, N, E. Ubiquinone. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller number 61. Your word is kyphoplasty. Could you repeat the word again? Kyphoplasty. Could I have everything? Yeah, sure. Um, kyphoplasty is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. The first part is German from Greek and the second part is French from Greek. It means the surgical filling of an injured or collapsed vertebra. The sentence is, the surgeon performed a kyphoplasty procedure to restore patient's original shape and configuration and relieve pain from spinal compression. Kyphoplasty. Can I have the part of speech? Kyphoplasty is a noun. Can you repeat the word again? Kyphoplasty. Kyphoplasty. K-Y-P-H-O-P-L-A-S-T-Y. Kyphoplasty. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller number 62. Your word is Humboldt. Humboldt. Can I have the definition? Humboldt means a river in northwestern Nevada in the United States. Humboldt. Um, Humboldt. H-U-M-B-O-L. That is correct. The next speller is speller number 63. Your word is Sirai. Can you repeat the word again? Sirai. Definition, please. Sirai means high altitude clouds composed of ice crystals and characterized by thin white filaments or narrow bands. Can I have the part of speech? It's a plural noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? The word's only pronunciation is Sirai. Does this come from Latin cirrus meaning um, curl? Uh, yes. Uh, could you repeat the word again? Sirai. Sirai. C I R R I. Sirai. That is correct. Next speller is speller number 78. Hello? Your, uh, your word is anent. Anent? Anent. May I have the definition? The word means in reference to, concerning, about. Okay, anent. May I have the language of origin? Anent is from English. Okay, um, is there any alternate pronunciations? There is just anent. Okay, anent. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Sounds right. Okay, anent. A and E and T, Anant. That is correct. Thank you. 
The next caller is speller number 79. Hello. Hello. Your word is Burkina Bay. Burkina Bay. May I have the definition? Burkina Bay means relating to the landlocked republic in Western Africa or its inhabitants. Burkina Bay. May I have the language of origin, please? Burkina Bay is from a Western African geographical name. Burkina Bay. Is there any alternate pronunciations? There's Burkina Bay and Burkina Bay. Burkina Bay. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's an adjective. Okay. And may I have the definition again? Burkina Bay means relating to the landlocked republic in Western Africa or its inhabitants. Okay. Burkina Bay. And can I have the alternative pronunciations again? There is Burkina Bay and Burkina Bay. Okay. Burkina Bay. B U R K I N A B E. Burkina Bay. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller number 115. Okay, uh, this word's a homonym, so I'm gonna give you all the information. The word is galena. It's a noun, it's from Latin, and it means a bluish gray mineral consisting of lead sulfide that is occurring in cubic or octahedral crystals and is the chief ore of lead. The sentence is, Sandra bought a nice specimen of cubic galena mounted on a stand, galena. Galena, are there any alternate pronunciation? There's just the one galena. Okay, galena, G. A L E N A Galen. That is correct. The next color is color number 116. Your word is Gyakuro. Um Gyakuro, is this from Japanese? Yes. Um Gyakuro, can I have all the information, please? Gyakuro is the only pronunciation. It's a noun, it's from Japanese, and it means a superior grade Japanese green tea prepared from the leaves of shaded bushes. Nancy imports fresh gyakuro tea directly from a family owned farm in Kyoto, Japan. Um, can you repeat it, please? Gyakuro. Gyakuro? Um, gyakuro, G-Y-O-K-U-R-O, -O, gyakuro. Yep, that is correct. Next speller is speller number 117. Hi. Hi. Your word is logothete. Logothete. May I have the definition, please? Logothete means one of various officers under the Byzantine emperors. Logothete. May I have a language of origin, please? Logothete is Latin from Greek. Logothete. May I have it used in a sentence, please? <clears throat> the Logothete gained power and authority under the emperor as they shared a variety of responsibilities ranging from taxes collection to leading the foreign policy. Does this come from the Greek root logos, meaning word? Uh, you're on the second thing. You have 35 seconds remaining. Okay. Where is logothete? Logothete. L O G O T H E T E. Logothete. That is correct. The next speller and the last speller for this round is speller number 125. Hi. Your word is indicia. 
may have all the information. Indicia is, uh, can also be pronounced indicia, and it's a noun. The word is from Latin, and it means a distinctive mark that indicates the nature or quality of something, a sign or a token. In sentences, the Court of Appeal found the evidence to be sufficient indicia of threshold reliability. Indicia or indicia? Indicia. I-N-D-I-C-I-A. Indicia. That's correct. Thank you. Are we starting the next round? Um, yeah, so that was the end of round one. Um, perfect round, so great job, everyone. Um, yeah, let's take a like really short break for five minutes. So um, it is 14, let's come back around 19, 20. Awesome, I think everyone's back, okay. Um, all right, let's get started with round two. Um, spellers, in this round, if you can say a little bit about uh, like where you're from and what grade you're in just before you spell, that would be awesome. Um, just so that everyone can get to know you a little bit better. Um, but yeah, let's start with speller 16. Hi. All right, uh, your word is Jumel. Um, can you say that one more time? Uh, the word is Jumel. Um, may I have the language of origin? Uh, Jumel is French from Latin. Uh, may I have the definition, please? Um, a Jumel is an object typically made or opened in pairs, such as windows or doors. Jumel. J-U-M-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Jumel. That is correct. Thank Next. You. Yep. Uh, next up is Speller 19. Uh, your word is Muringer. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is Muringer. Muringer? Muringer. Muringer? Yeah. Um, can I have all the information? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is Muringer. It's a noun. It comes from Middle English, from French, from Latin. It's a person who is in charge of the wall of a town or its repairs. And uh, the sense is Spencer was appointed as the Muringer of a Birmingham wall. Muringer, um, it's the only pronunciation, right? Um, yeah. Can I have the language of origin and the part of speech? Uh, it's a noun and it comes from Middle English, from French, from Latin. <clears throat> Muringer, am I saying the word correctly? Sounds right. Muringer. 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 Uh, it's Muringer. Muringer. Um. Muringer. M U R. Can I start it over? Yeah. Muringer. M U R. E N G E R. Muringer. That is correct. Thank you. Next up, yep. Uh, next up, we have speller thirty-eight. All right. Uh, your word is matterosis. Um. Can you please repeat the word? Uh, the word is matterosis. Matterosis. May I have the definition, please? It means the loss of hair, especially of the eyebrows or eyelashes, as the result of a disease. Matterosis. May I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's New Latin from Greek. Matterosis. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one. Matterosis. Matterosis. Can you please use the word in a sentence? Uh, Amanda's eye infection led to matterosis and blepharitis. Okay. Matterosis. Um, and can you please repeat the language of origin? Uh, it's New Latin from Greek. Okay, matterosis. M-A-D, 
M-A-T-A-R-O-S-I-S, Matarosis. That is correct. Next, we have Speller 41. Okay, uh, your word is aliquot. Could you repeat the word? Uh, the word is aliquot. Oh, may I have the difference? May I have all the information? Yeah, uh, the two pronunciations are aliquot and aliquot. It's an adjective and it comes from Latin. Uh, aliquot means denoting an, ex an exact divisor or factor of a quantity. And uh, the second, the sentence is an aliquot part of 12 is three. Oh, could you repeat all the information again? Uh, it's aliquot and aliquot. Uh, could you repeat the, all the information again? Okay, um, the two pronunciations are aliquot and aliquot. It's an adjective and it comes from Latin. It means denoting an exact divisor or factor of a quantity. And uh, the sentence is an aliquot of 12 is three. That is correct. Okay. Next, we have Speller 49. Uh, your word is arcosolium. Arcosolium, may I have all the information? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is arcosolium. It's a noun and it comes from Latin. It means an arch recess for sarcophagus in Roman catacombs. And uh, the sense is the famous arcosolium in Spain was built in the wall of the, in the, wall of the cathedral, cathedral with brick and marble. Arcosolium. Yeah. Um, can you please repeat the language of origin? Uh, it's just Latin. Arcosolium. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, Arcosolium. Can we see your hands, please, Ananya? Right here. Arcosolium. A R C O S O L I U M Arcosolium. That is correct. Thank you. Next we have speller sixty one. Uh, your word is serusophone. Can you repeat the word again? Uh, the word is serusophone. Can I have everything? Yeah, uh, the two pronunciations are serusophone and serusophone. It's a noun. It comes from a French name plus Middle English from Latin and Greek. Uh, it's a wind instrument related to the oboe and used especially in military bands. And uh, the sense is Kelly plays a multitude of instruments, the xylophone, bassoon, serusophone, and balaphone. Can you repeat the word again? Uh, the word is serusophone. Serusophone. I think you cut out. Um, S A. R R U S O P H O N E. That is correct. Thank you. Next, we have Speller 62. All right. Uh, your word is Farindol. Farindol. Um, can I have the definition? Yeah, uh, it's a lively Provencal dance in which the dancers join hands and wind in and out of a chain. French feminine diminutive all. Um, I don't see that given here. Okay, um, Farindol, are there any alternate pronunciations? 
Um, it's like it can be Ferrandol or Ferrandol. Excuse me, uh, Ferrandol. F A R A N D O L E. Yep, that is correct. Next, we have Speller 63. All right, uh, your word is Sabertash. Sabertash, can I have the definition? Uh, it means a leather case suspended from a cav cavalryman's saddle. Can I have the language of origin? It's French from German. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It can be Sabertash or Sabertash. Can you repeat the alternate pronunciations, please? Uh, it can be Sabertash or Sabertash. Can I have all the information? Uh, the word is Sabertash or Sabertash. It's a noun and it's French from German. It means a leather case suspended from a cavalryman's saddle. And uh, the sentence is, uh, Frederick was scribbling a note on the smooth surface of his saber tash. Can you repeat the definition? It's a leather case suspended from a cavalryman's saddle. Saber tash, S A B. R E T A C H E, Sabertash. That is correct. Next speller is uh, speller 78. Hello? All right. Uh, your word is amaret. Amaret, may I have the definition? It means a brief or minor love affair. Okay, amaret. May I have the language of origin? Uh, it's from French. Okay, amaret. Is there any other pronunciations? It's just the one, amaret. Okay, amaret. Does it come from the French diminutive that? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Does it come from the French root amour, meaning love? Yes. Okay, amaret. May I repeat the word? Amaret. Amaret. Um, may I say in a sentence, please? Uh, Ella wrote a novel about a fictional summer amaret. Okay, amaret. Am I pronouncing correctly? Sounds right. Okay, amaret. A M O U R E T T E. Amaret. That is correct. Thank you. Next up, we have Speller 79. Okay. Uh, your word is etiolation. Can you repeat that? Uh, the word is etiolation. Etiolation? Yeah. May I have the definition? Uh, it means the process of yellowing or whitening of a green plant through, la through, through a lack of sunlight. Etiolation. Um, can I have the language of origin? It's French from an English combining form. E -D -E okay. Is there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, it's just the one, etiolation. Etiolation? Yeah. Does this come from Latin etheria meaning like heaven or the sky? I don't see that given here. Etiolation. Can I hold the information? Yeah, the only pronunciation is etiolation. It's a noun and it's French and it's French and an English combining form. Uh, it's the process of yellowing or whitening of a green plant through lack of sunlight. And uh, the sense is the bulk of leaf tissue remained green and without visible etiolation after uh, staying in complete darkness for two days. And is there any alternate pronunciation? Is there any alternate pronunciations? 
It's just, uh, it's just 30 seconds remaining. Yeah, okay. the accumulation. Etiolation. Ten seconds. Etiolation. E T I O L A T I O N. Etiolation. That is correct. Thank you. Next, we have speller 115. All right. Uh, your word is scotodynia. Scotodynia. Can I have all the information? Yeah, uh, the two pronunciations are scotodynia or scotodynia. It's a noun and it's new Latin from Greek plus new Latin. It means dizziness with a headache and impairment of sight. And uh, the sentence is Tina was diagnosed with, scot with scotodynia after experiencing headaches. Does this come from the Greek word Odin meaning pain? I don't see that given here. Okay, scotodynia. S C O T O D I N I Scotodini. That is correct. Thank you. Next, uh, we have Speller 116. Uh, your word is Philas. Um, Philas, can I have the can I have all the information, please? Yeah, the only pronunciation is philas. It's a noun and it comes from French. It means any of various vegetable fibers uh, produced from manufacturing into yarn. And uh, the sense is Peter started a business to make yarn from philas. Um, does it come from Latin phil meaning um, like thread? Uh, yes, it does. Um, uh, can you please repeat all the pronunciations? It's just the one, Philas. Philas. F I L A S S E, Philas. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 117. Uh, your word is rear supper. Now the word again? Uh, the word is rear supper. Rear supper. May I have the definition, please? Uh, it's the final meal of the day, specifically a lavish meal taken late at night in addition to the usual evening meal. Rear supper. May I have the language of origin, please? Um, just, it's Middle English. Rear supper. May I have it used in a sentence, please? Uh, the researchers investigated the relation between eating a rear supper and acid reflux. Rear supper. Rear supper. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Sounds right. Okay. Rear supper. Rear supper. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Rear supper. May I have the definition again? Uh, it's the final meal of the day, specifically a lavish meal taken late at night in addition to the usual evening meal. Okay. You have 40 seconds left. Okay. Rear supper. R-E-A-R-S-U-P-P-E-R. -P -P -E Rear supper. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is R-E-R-E-S-U-P-P-E-R. -E -E Great try. Okay, our next speller and the final speller for this round is speller 125. Hi. Uh, your word is docerat. Could I have all the information, please? Yeah, the only pronunciation is docerette. It's a noun and it comes from French. Uh, it means an additional block of stone resting on the capital of a column and serving as an extra impost in Byzantine and Romanesque architecture. And uh, the sense is the high docerette carved in bas relief from various artists is a main attraction of the building. 
Does this contain the French of feminine diminutive et? I don't see that given here. Does this contain the French masculine diminutive et? Uh, yes. Dosseret. Could you repeat the definition, please? It's a clearly defined block resting on the capital of a column and serving as an extra impost in Byzantine and Romanesque architecture. Dosseret. D O S S E R E T. Dosseret. That is correct. Thank you. All right, great. That's the end of round two. Um, we had one speller misspell. We have 12 spellers, or sorry, 13 spellers remaining. Um, let's go straight into round three. Um, yeah, and spellers, if we can have, just but right before your turn, um, just like say your name um, and then like where you're from and your grade, that would be amazing. Um, so yeah, let's start with speller 16. Um, hi, my name is Sharini, and I'm from Texas, and I'm in grade six. Hi. Your word is fessonine. Um, can you repeat that one time? One more time. Fessonine. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There is fessonine, fessonine. Fessonine. Um, can I have the language of origin, please? Fessonine comes from two Latin parts. Fessonine, F-E-S-C-E-N-N-I-N-E, Fessonine. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, the next speller is speller 19. <clears throat> Your word is arantiaceous. Can you repeat the word, please? Arantiaceous. Arantiaceous? Arantiaceous. Can I have all the information? Arantiaceous um, is an adjective. The first part's from Latin, the second part's from English. And it means resembling or relating to the sour orange. The sentence is, Harry has a tree in his backyard that yields an arantiaceous fruit. Arantiaceous. Arantiaceous. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just arantiaceous. Arantiaceous or arantiaceous? Uh, arantiaceous. Arantiaceous. Can you repeat all the information, please? Arantiaceous is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective. The first part's from Latin, the second part's from English. And it means resembling or relating to sour orange. Um, the sentence is Harry has a tree in his backyard that yields an orantiaceous fruit. Orantiaceous. Um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? Orantiaceous, the first part is from Latin, the second part is from English. Orantiaceous. 30 seconds remaining. Orantiaceous. A U R A N. T I A C E O U S or antiaceous? That is correct. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question. I think my um secondary is gonna run out of charge. Is it okay if I um put another device in place of it? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, our next speller is speller thirty-eight. Your word is philodracious. Philodracious, may I have the definition, please? Philodracious is the only pronunciation. And um, it means relating to a family of Asiatic and Australian, Australian perennial herbs. Can you please repeat the word? Philodracious. Philodracious, may I have the language of origin, please? Philodracious, um, the first part's New Latin from Greek and the second part's New Latin. Okay, philodracious. Does this come from the Greek root phil meaning leaf? I don't see that given. Okay, 
Philodratius. Um, and can you please use the word in a sentence? The Philodratius herbs have spicate flowers that resemble orchids. Okay, Philodratius. P H I L Y D R A C E O U S. Philodratius. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 41. Your word is taramosolata. Oh, I'm this sorry, can you speak louder? Is this new Greek? Yes. Taramosolata. May I have all the information, please? Taramosolata. Um, it can also be pronounced taramosolata. Um, it's a noun. It's from New Greek, and it means a Greek dip or spread made from pureed salted fish, roe, bread or potato, oil, lemon juice, and seasonings. Um, the sentence is: Logan loves to eat sesame topped flatbread with taramosolata. Taramosolata. Can you repeat the definition again? Sorry, can you speak a little? Can you repeat louder? the definition again? Tarama salata means a Greek dip or spread made from pureed salted fish, roe, bread or potato, oil, lemon juice, and seasonings. All right. Tarama salata. T-A-R-A-M-O-S-A-L-A-T-A. Tarama salata. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 49. Your word is mermithyrine. Mermithyrine may have all the information. The word can be pronounced mermithyrine or mermithyrin. It's an adjective. The first part's from Greek, the second part's from Greek, and the third part's from English. And it means feeding on ants. The sentence is, the sloth bear is a mermithyrine bear species native to the Indian subcontinent. Mermithyrine. Mermithyrine. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is mermithyrine, mermithyrin. Mermithyrine. Mermithyrine. Can you please repeat the language of origin? The first part's from Greek, the second part's from Greek, and the third part's from English. Mermithyrine. Mermithyrine. Can you please use it in a sentence? The sloth bear is a mermithyrine bear species native to the Indian subcontinent. Mermithyrine. Mermithyrine. M. Y R M I T H E R I N E. I'm I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M Y R M O T H E R I N E. Great try. Our next speller is speller 61. Your word is pyrameter. Can you repeat the word? Pyrameter. Can I have everything? The word can be pronounced pyrameter, pyrameter. It's a noun. It comes from two Greek parts, and it means an instrument for measuring the force required to draw wheel carriages on roads of different constructions. Um, the sentence is, the officials announced that about a million dollars for overlaying Tarmacanum Road through the village to the county boundary after testing with the pyrameter. Can I have the definition again? Pyrameter means an instrument for measuring the force required to draw wheel carriages on roads of different constructions. Can you repeat the word again? Pyrameter. Um, can I ask the origin? 
pyrometer is from two Greek parts. Does this word come from the Greek pyran meaning force? Can you say that again? Uh, does this word come from the Greek pyran meaning force? I don't see that given to me. Okay, um, pyrometer. P E I R A M E T E R, pyrometer. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller 62. Your word is campylotropus. Campylotropus, um, okay, definition. Campylotropus means having an ovule partially inverted and curved such that the micropyle nearly meets the funiculus. Okay, Greek campylo meaning bent. Sorry, can you say that again a little bit louder? Um, Greek campylo meaning like bent, curved. Uh, no, no, no. Um, okay, a trope meaning to turn, Greek. You gotta talk a bit louder. Okay. Um, Greek trope meaning to turn. Yeah. Campylotropus. C A M P Y L O T R O P. Can I have the part of speech? The word's an adjective. Um, 45 seconds remaining. Can I just continue where I left off? Uh, yeah, sure. O-U-S, Campylotropus. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 63. Your word is map moon. Can you repeat that, please? Map moon. Map moan? Map moan. Am I saying this right? Map moan? Sounds right. Map moan. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one map moan. Can I have the definition, please? Map moan means a medieval European map of the world. Map moan. Does this, uh, can I have a language word too? The word is Middle English from French from Latin. Does this come from the French moan meaning world? Yes. Could you repeat the word please? Map moan. Map moan. M A P P E M O N D E map moan. That is correct. Uh, our next speller is speller seventy eight. Hello. Hello. Your word is ampharisgus. Ampharisgus. May I have the definition? Ampharisgus means a small ancient Greek jar or vase with two handles and a narrow neck. Okay, ampharisgus. Um, is there any other pronunciations? There's just the one, ampharisgus. Okay, ampharisgus. May I have the part of speech? The word's a noun. Okay, and may I have the definition? Ampharisgus means a small ancient Greek jar or vase with two handles and a narrow neck. Okay, ampharisgus. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Can you say it again? Ampharisgus. Ampharisgus. Okay, ampharisgus. And may I have the part of speech again? It's a noun. And may I have the language of origin? The word is from Greek. Okay, ampharisgus. A M P H O R I S K O S, ampharisgus. That is correct. Thank you. Hello. Our next, our next speller is speller seventy nine. 
Hello, your word is collyrium. Collyrium, may I have the definition? Collyrium means a medicated solution or lotion applied locally to the eye for relief of irritation, eye wash. Collyrium, may I have the language of origin? Collyrium is Latin from Greek. Collyrium, is, can I have all the information? Collyrium is the only pronunciation. It's a noun, the word is Latin from Greek, and it means a medicated solution or lotion applied locally to the eye for relief of irritation, eye wash. The sentence is, Richard used a collyrium to eliminate redness in his eyes due to pollen allergy. Collyrium. Collyrium, does this come from the Latin root con meaning together? I do. Okay, collyrium. You can have the definition again. Collyrium means a medicated solution or lotion applied locally to the eye for relief of irritation, eye wash. And can I have the language of origin again, please? Collyrium is Latin from Greek. Okay. Thirty-five seconds remaining. Okay, collyrium. C, O, L, L, Y, R, I, U, M. Collyrium. That is correct. Thank you. Next, we have Speller One Fifteen. Your word is Kedusha. Kedusha, can I have all the information? Kedusha is a noun. It's from Hebrew and means a liturgical prayer in the Jewish ritual that is incorporated into the third blessing of the um, Amidah recitations. Kedusha. The recitation of Kedusha on a daily basis is a Babylonian custom. Kedusha, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one Kedusha. Kedusha. K E D U S H A H. Kedusha. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 160. Your word is tabetasol. Um, can you repeat that, please? Tabetasol. Tabetasol. Can I have all the information, please? The word can you pronounce tabetasol or tabetasol. It's from Latin plus English. It's a noun, and it means unfrozen ground above, within, or below the permanently frozen ground. Sentences, the hydraulic engineers are planning to preserve water bodies from freezing and promote tibetasol development in permafrost areas. Tibetasol. Um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? It's from Latin plus English. Tibetasol. T A B E T I S O L Tibetasol. That is correct. Uh, and the next speller for this round is speller 125. I'm Roy Seligman. I'm in grade eight and I live in Nassau, Bahamas. Your word is cool tour conf. Could I have all of the information, please? The word came pronounced cool tour conf. Cool tour comp, cool tour comp, and cool tour comp. Um, the word is from German. It's a noun. It means a conflict between civil government and religious authorities, especially over control of education and church appointments. The sentence is the 1920s proved to be the focal decade in the cool tour comp of American Protestantism. Could you repeat the alternate pronunciations, please? So there is cool tour comp, cool tour comp. Kulturkampf and Kulturkampf. Kulturkampf. K U L T U R K A M P F. Kulturkampf. That is correct. Thank you. That's the end of round three. Um, 
Okay, let's take a short break. So it is um, 58. Let's come back at 05. It, um, let's go ahead and begin getting ready for the round, next round. Okay, so we just finished round three um, and we have 12 spellers remaining. Um, you guys, or sorry. Um, yeah, we have 12 spellers remaining. You guys are all doing amazing. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead if judges are ready. Looks, everyone looks ready. Um, let's get started with round four with speller 16. Hi. Uh, your word is Bundesrat. Um, Bundesrat. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one Bundesrat. Um, may I have the language of origin? Bundesrat is from German. Bundesrat. Um, may I have the definition? The upper house of the German and Austrian parliaments. Bundesrat. Bundesrat. B. U N T E S R A T Bundesrat. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller nineteen. Your word is Sierrazem. Sierrazem, can I have all the information, please? Sierism is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's Russian or Lithuanian from Latin. And it means any of a group of soils found in cool to temperate arid regions that is brownish gray at the surface with a lighter layer below and is based in a carbonate or hard pan layer. The sentence is the Russian terms for soil classification often refer to color. Chernozem, black soil, brunozem, brown soil, and sierism, gray soil. Sierism, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one Sierism. Sierism. Sierism, can you repeat the language of origin, please? It's Russian or Lithuanian from Latin. Sierism. Sierism. Sierism, am, am I saying the word correctly? Sounds right. Sierism. S I E R. O-Z-E-M, Sierzem. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 38. Your word is terabilita. Terabilita, may I have the definition please? Terabilita means an effect or expression of powerful will and immense angry force. Terabilita, may I have the language of origin, please? The word is Italian from Latin. Terabilita, can you please use the word in a sentence? Michelangelo's artwork is known for terabilita with awesomeness or emotional intensity of expression. Terabilita. Terabilita, T E R. R I B I L I T A, Terabilita. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 41. Your word is Chichis Beo. Chichis Beo, is this Italian? Yes. Chichis Beo, may I have the definition? The recognized gallant of a married woman in Italy, especially in the 18th century. Can you speak a little bit louder? Uh, may I have the part of speech? Chichis Beo is a noun. Chichis Beo, um, could you give me all the information? The word's only pronunciation is Chichis Beo. It's a noun, it's from Italian, and it means the recognized gallant of a married woman in Italy, especially in the 18th century. In ancient Italy, the Chichis Beo was often chosen by common agreement of husband and wife when drawing up the marriage contract. Chichis Beo. Chichis Beo. C 
I C I S B E O. Cheech's bail. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 61. Your word is commandatura. Um, can you repeat the word again? Commandatura. Can I have everything? Sorry, can you repeat that again? Uh, can I have everything? Yeah. Um, commandatura is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. The word is German from French, and it means a Russian military government headquarters in Europe. The sentence is, after World War II, a commandatura was established in Berlin. Commandatura. Commandatura. K-O-M-M-A-N-D-A-T-U-R-A. Commandatura. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, the next speller is speller 62. Your word is Queramon. Language of origin. Queramon is Dutch Creole from Galibi from Tupi. Um, okay, definition. Queramon means a mullet of Guyana found in turbid waters where it lives by suction. Queramon, can I have all the information? Queramon is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. The word is Dutch Creole from Galibi from Tupi, and it means a mullet of Guyana found in turbid waters where it lives by suction. The sentence is Fiona's mom cooked Queramon fish curry in Guyanese style. Queramon. Queramon. Q U E R I M A N. Queramon. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 63. Your word is medical. This is a near homonym, so I'm gonna give you all the information. The word can be pronounced medical or medical. It's a noun. It's Portuguese from Arabic, and it means the basic monetary unit of Mozambique. The sentence is, the medical was the least valued currency until the Zimbabwean dollar took the title in late August 2005. Medical, medical. Can I have the language of origin? The word is Portuguese from Arabic, medical. Medical? Medical or medical. Can I have all the information? Okay, so the word came from medical or medical. It's a noun. It's Portuguese from Arabic. It means the basic monetary unit of Mozambique. And the sentence is the medical was the least valued currency until the Zimbabwean dollar took the title in late August 2005. Medical. Medical. 45 seconds remain. M E. T I C A L medical. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 78. Hello? Your word is panettiere. Can you repeat the word? Panettiere. Panettiere, may I have the definition? Panettiere means an ornate French provincial bread box. Okay, panettiere. This comes from the French word pan meaning bread. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, panettiere. Does it come from the French female diminutive ear? Yes. Okay, panettiere, may I repeat the word? Yes, <clears throat> the word here is panettiere or panettiere. 
Okay, Panettiere. Am I pronouncing the word correctly? Sounds right. Okay, and it's French, right? French from Latin, yeah. <clears throat> okay, Panettiere. P A N E T T I E R E. Panettiere. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Uh, the correct spelling is P A N E. T-I-E-R-E. Oh. Our next speller is speller 79. Your word is Potsawalana. Can you repeat that? Potsawalana. Potsawalana. Can I have the language of origin? Potsawalana is Italian from French. Potsuolana. Can I have the definition? A porous variety of volcanic tuff or ash used in making hydraulic cement. Can you repeat the pronunciation? Just the one, Potsuolana. Potsuolana. Okay. Can I have all the information? Yes. Uh, so there's just one pronunciation, Potsuolana. It's a noun, it's Italian from French, and it means a porous variety of volcanic tuff or ash used in making hydraulic cement. Um, the sentence is, natural Potsuolana is often composed mainly of a fine chocolate red volcanic earth. Potsuolana. Can I have all the, can I have the uh, part of speech? 45, you have 45 seconds remaining. Potsuolana is a noun. Potsuolana. And can I have the word in a sentence? Yeah. Um, natural Potsuolana is often composed mainly of a fine chocolate red volcanic earth. Potsuolana. Okay. 30 seconds. So no Pots, Potsuolana. P O Z. Can I restart? Yeah. Okay. Potsuolana. P O Z Z U O L A N A. Potsuolana. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 115. Your word is Seneschal C. Seneschal C, can I have all the information, please? Seneschal C is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. Um, the first part is Middle English from French from Latin, and the second part's Latin. It means a district under an administrative or judicial officer in a city. The sentence is, the Seneschal C was in charge of the castle, estate, or home in the medieval times. Seneschal C. Seneschal C. Am I saying it correctly? Seneschal C? Sounds right. Seneschal C. Does this, no, never mind, Seneschal C, S E N E. Can I start over? Oh, yeah. Okay, Seneschal C, S E N E S C H A L C Y, Seneschal C. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is S E N E S C H A L S Y. Thank you. Great try. Uh, our next speller is speller 116. Your word is Kalashoni. Kalashoni, can I have the um, part of speech, please? Kalashoni is a noun. Um, can I have all the information, please? The word's only pronunciation is Kalashoni. It's a noun, it's Italian from Latin from Greek, and it means a guitar with two or three strings used especially in Southern Italy. The sentence is Leonardo played a musical piece using Kalashoni. Kalashoni. Um, can you please repeat the language of origin? Kalashoni is Italian from Latin from Greek. Kalashoni. Um, can you please repeat all the information? 
Calashoni is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's Italian from Latin from Greek, and it means a guitar with two or three strings, especially in Southern Italy. The sentence is Leonardo played a musical piece using Calashoni. Calashoni. Um, is this plural? Calashoni is singular. Calashoni. C A L A. Can I start over, please? Yeah. You have 40 seconds remaining. Sorry, you have 40 seconds remaining. 35 now. Kalashoni. C A L A S C I O N E. Kalashoni. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 125. Right. Your word is setacentis. Could I have all of the information, please? Setacentis is the only pronunciation. Um, it's a noun. The first part is Italian from Latin and the second part is English. And it means an artist, poet, or student of the 18th century period in Italian literature and art. Amelia's great grandfather was a setacentist who experienced the Renaissance movement in Italy. Setacentis. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is just the one setacentis. Uh, can you repeat all the information? Yes. Setacentis is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. The first part is Italian from Latin and the second part is English. And it means an artist, poet, or student of the 18th century period in Italian literature and art. The sentence is, Amelia's great-grandfather was a setacentist who experienced the Renaissance movement in Italy. Does this come from the Latin sense meaning a hundred? Uh, yeah. uh, did you hear me? Yeah, it does. Um, could you repeat the definition, please? Yes. An artist, poet, or student of the 18th century period in Italian literature and art. Uh, could you repeat the word? You have 35 seconds remaining. Setacentist. Setacentist? Setacentist. Setacentist. Thank you. Setacentist. Setacentist. S E T T. E C E N T I S T. Setacentist. That is correct. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. That was the end of round four um, and actually super exciting. So we have our top 10 spellers. Um, so congratulations, everyone. Um, so from here on out, uh, things are going to work a slight bit differently. So uh, if you do misspell a word um, after this point, please don't leave the Zoom call. Just turn off your camera and stay on. Um, and then you're, you can leave at the end of the round once we announce like um, your rank and all of the money and everything that comes along with it. So um, yeah, after this point, super exciting. Everyone's gonna get a trophy and cash prizes. So um, we'll talk more about that after every round. Um, awesome. Let's go straight into round five then, if everyone's good with that. Hey. All right, but uh, your word is, yeah. I'll go over home. Uh, your word is bokadum. Bokadum. Um, may I have the language of origin? Uh, it's a Telugu word. Um, are there any alternative pronunciations? It's just the one, bokadum. May I have the definition? Yeah, uh, it means uh, an aquatic, mildly venomous snake uh, native to India, southeastern Asia, and northern Australia. Okay, Bokadam. B O K. 
K-A-D-A-M, Kokodam. Can you repeat your spelling? I Part of it cut out. Um, Bokadam, B-O-C-K-A-D-A-M, Bokadam. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B-O-K-A-D-A-M. Oh, I think it's correct. It has a... It's a variant, sorry. Uh, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, the next speller is speller number 19. All right. Uh, your word is Hellespontin. Um, can you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is Hellespontin. Hellespontin. Um, can I have all the information? Yeah, uh, it can be pronounced Hellespontin or Hellespontin. It's a noun and it comes from a Turkish geographical name from Latin from Greek. It means relating to the strait connecting the Sea of Marmara with the Aegean Sea and separating the European and Asian parts of Turkey. And uh, the sense is the Turkish government is considering building a suspension bridge over the Hellespontin Strait. Hellespontin, Hellespontine? Yeah. Um, can I have the language of origin again? It's a Turkish geographical name from Latin from Greek. Um, what's the part of speech? Uh, it's a noun, or it's an adjective, not bad. Um, can you repeat all the pronunciations, please? It can be Hellespontin or Hellespontine. Hellespontin, Hellespontine. Am I saying the word correctly? Sounds right. Hellespontin, Hellespontine. H-E-L-L-E-S-P-O-N-T-I-N-E. -L -L -E -E. Hellespontine. That's correct. Thank you. All right. Um, the next speller is 38. Okay, yeah, not bad. Okay, uh, your word is Giani. Giani, may I have the definition, please? Uh, it's a Sikh religious official who part participates in religious services. Um, Giani, may I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's Punjabi from Sanskrit. Um, Giani, are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, Giani. Uh, Giani, um, can I please have the word used in a sentence? Uh, the seventh president of India, Zail Singh, was a notable person with a Giani title. Okay. Giani, can you please repeat the definition in the language of origin? Uh, it's a Sikh religious official who participates in Gurdwara services, and uh, this origin is Punjabi from Sanskrit. Okay. Giani, and um, can you please use the word in a sentence? Uh, the seventh president of India was a notable person with the Giani title, or the title of Giani. Okay. 45 seconds remaining. Okay. Can you please repeat the word? Uh, the word is Giani. Okay, Giani. Um, G-Y-A-N-I, Giani. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 41. Hello. All right. Uh, your word is Orisha. Orisha. May I have all the information? Yeah. Uh, the only pronunciation is Orisha. It's a noun and it comes from Yor Yoruba. Uh, it's a Yoruba deity or spirit. And the sense is Orisha spirits are sent by higher divinities for the guidance of all creation of humanity on earth. Uh, Orisha, could you repeat all the information again? Yeah, uh, the pronunciation is Orisha. It's a noun. It comes from Yoruba. It's a Yoruba deity or spirit. And other senses, Orisha spirits are sent by higher divinities for the guidance of all creation of humanity on earth. All right, Orisha. O R 
I S H A Orisha. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller sixty one. Uh, your word is rompu. Can you repeat the word again? Uh, the word is rompu. Could I have everything? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is rompu. It's an adjective and it comes from French from Latin. Uh, it means depicted as broken, usually with the broken piece pushed up. Uh, it's used to describe a heraldic ordinary. And uh, the sense is, a chevron rompu has its point offset to chief, whereas a, che a chevron fracted has its point offset to base. Could you repeat the word again? Uh, the word is rompu. And can I have a part of the speech? Uh, it's an adjective. Rompu. R O. M P U. Okay. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller sixty-two. All right. Uh, your word is prenyak. Prenyak. Um, can I have the definition? Uh, it's any of several aromatic, fruity, French, red, or white still wines. Language of origin? Uh, it's from a French geographical name. Prenyak. P R E I G N A C. Prenyak. That is correct. Uh, our next speller is speller 63. All right. Uh, your word is synopte. Can I repeat that, please? Uh, the word is synopte. Synopte. Could um, are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one. Synopte. Synopte. Could I have the definition, please? It's a series of liturgical prayers in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Synopte. Can I have the language of origin? Uh, it's from Middle Greek. Can I have the part of speech? Uh, it's a plural noun. Does this come from Greek, sin meaning together? Yeah. Could you repeat the word, please? Uh, the word is synopte. 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 S Y N A P T. A, I, synopte. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 79. Hello. Hi. All right. Uh, your word is verilamian. Can you repeat that? Uh, the word is verilamian. Verilamian. Can I have the language of origin? It's from an English eponym plus an English part. Verilamian. Can I have the definition? Um, it means of or relating to an English philosopher and author. Verilamian? Is yeah. there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one. Verilamian. Verilamian. Can I have all the information? Uh, the only pronunciation is Verilamian. It's an adjective and it's from an English eponym plus an English part. Um, it means relating to or like that of an English philosopher and author. And uh, the sense is Verilamian is the term used for the new, uh, new elements that F Francis Bacon produced in his writings of the common law. Can I have the part of speech? It's an adjective. And the definition again? Uh, it's relating to or like that of an English philosopher and author. You have 45 seconds remaining. Can I have the language of origin? It's from an English eponym plus an English part. Does this have the... Verilamian. Verilamian. 
V E R U L A M I A N. Very Lamian. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 116. Uh, your word is histazarin. Histazarin. Um, can I have all the information, please? Yeah. Uh, the only pronunciation is histazarin. It's a noun, and it comes from ISV from Greek. It's an orange-yellow compound prepared from pyrocatechol and phthalic anhydride. And uh, the sense is Dr. Waldman filed a patent for a new process uh, to prepare histazarin. Histazarin. Oh. Can you please repeat all the information? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is histazarin. It's a noun, it's ISV from Greek. Um, it's an orange yellow compound prepared from pyrocatechol and phthalic anhydride. And the sense is Dr. Wallman filed a patent for a new process to prepare histazarin. Histazarin. H Y S. Um, can I start over, please? Yeah. Histazarin. H Y S T A Z A R I N. Histazarin. That that is correct. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, your word is Chandra Dan. Could I have all of the information, please? Yeah, the only pronunciation is Chandra Dan. It's a noun and it's from unknown origin. It's a two wheeled car or chaise, specifically one with the hood. And uh, the sense is I saw an old Chandra Dan moving up the road. Chandra Dan, um, could you repeat the uh, language of origin? Um, it's of unknown origin. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, Chandra Dan. Could you repeat the definition, please? It's a two-wheeled car or chaise, specifically one with the hood. Chandra Dan. Um, uh, could you repeat all the information, please? Yeah. Uh, the only pronunciation is Chandra Dan. It's a noun, and it's from unknown origin. It's a two-wheeled cart or chaise, spe specifically one with the hood. And uh, the sense is, I saw an I saw an old Chandra Dan moving up the road. Chandra Dan. Yeah. Chandra Dan. Uh, Chandra Dan. Uh, could you repeat the language of origin? It's of unknown origin. Chandra Dan. Um, S H. A N D R A D A N Chandradan. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, that is the end of round five. Also a perfect round. So great job, everyone. Um, let's do a very quick break. Um, so it's 38, let's come back at around 43. Um, okay, um, let's go ahead and get started with our next round, if judges are ready. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and start with Speller 16. Hi. Hi. All right, uh, your word is... Sorry, there was some feedback. Uh, your word is croquisite. Um, may I have the language of origin? Yeah, uh, it's German from French. Um, may I have the definition? Yeah, uh, it's a mineral consisting of lead chromate and its crystals. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, croquisite. Croquisite or croquisite? Croquisite. 
Crocosite. Crocosite, C R O I Q U I S I T E. Crocosite. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C R O C O I S I T E. Crocosite. Great try. Thank you. Right, uh, number 19. Uh, your word has a homonym. Uh, the word is karate. It's a noun. It's from Spanish, and it means a disease found in tropical Americas caused by spirochetes. Karate? Yeah. Um, can I have all the information? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is karate. It's a noun, and it's from Spanish. It's a disease found in tropical America caused by spirochetes. And uh, the sense is one of the most common symptoms of karate is colored spots on the skin. Um, um, can I have the pronunciation? It's just karate. Karate? Karate? Yeah, karate. Karate? Yeah. Karate. Um. Can I have all the information again? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is karate. It's a noun and it's from Spanish. It's a disease found in tropical America caused by spirochetes. And uh, the sense is one of the most common symptoms of karate is colored spots on the skin. Can I have the language of origin? Uh, it's just Spanish. Karate, am I saying the word correctly? Yeah. Karate, um, karate. You have 30 seconds remaining. Karate, can you repeat the pronunciation? Yeah, it's just karate. Karate. C A R A T E karate. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller thirty-eight. All right. Uh, your word is medrinyaki. Medrinyaki. May I have the definition, please? It's a cloth made from the fiber of the sago palm in the Philippines. Medrin Yaki, may I have the language of origin, please? Uh, it's from Spanish. Medrin Yaki, can you please use the word in a sentence? Uh, Miranda wore a purple dress made of Medrin Yaki for the party. Okay, Medrin Yaki. M E D R I N A Q U E. Medrin Yaki. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 41. All right. Uh, your word is enkian. Sorry, enkianthus. Could you repeat the word? Uh, the word is enkian. Enkianthus. Enkianthus? Yeah. Uh, may I have all the information? Uh, the word is enchianthus. It's a noun and it's new Latin from Greek. Uh, it's a genus of Asian shrubs or small trees in the heath family. And uh, the sense is enchianthus. Plants are best grown in well-drained acidic soils. Enchianthus. Does this contain the uh, Latin root anthus meaning plant? Uh, yes. Could you repeat all the information again? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation. The right is, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the only there's two slight pronunciations. It's enchianthus or enchianthus. It's a noun and it's new Latin from Greek. It's a genus of Asian shrubs or small trees in the heath family. And uh, the sense is enchianthus plants are best grown in well-drained acidic soils. Oh, could you repeat the language of origin again? 
Uh, it's, it's new Latin. Seconds. Sorry, it's, it's new Latin from right. Greek. Yeah. In Kansas. E N C H I A N T H U S and Kansas. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is E N K I A N T H U S. Great try. Our next speller is speller 61. All right. uh, your word is Madaramba. Can you repeat the word? Uh, the word is Madaramba. Can I have everything? Uh, the only pronunciation is Madaramba. It's a noun and it's from a native name in Australia. It's a shrub or small tree of Australia, having the flowers in pairs or threes. And uh, the sense is Madarumba plants grow in Eastern Australia and reach a height of about 10 meters. Can I ask for the speech? Uh, it's a noun. Could you repeat the word again? The word is Madarumba. Madarumba? Yeah. Um, Madarumba. Okay. M O T H E R U M B A H. Madarumba. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller sixty two. Right. Uh, your word is Mikkel Gamot. I'm Mikkel Gamot. Can I please have all the information? Yeah, uh, the only pronunciation is Mikkel Gamot. It's a noun and it's from Old English. It means the great council under an Anglo Saxon king. And uh, the sense is the Mikkelgamot served under the King of England from their arrival in the fifth century up to the Norman conquest. Okay, uh, Mikkelgamot, can I have the language of origin? It's from Old English. Mikkelgamot, M-I-C-K-L-E-G-E-M-O-T-E, Mikkelgamot. That is correct. Uh, our next speller is speller 63. Uh, your word is boreliacidal. Boreliacidal, could I have the definition please? It means relating to medicine that destroys the causative agent of Lyme disease. Borre boreliacidal, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, it can be boreliacidal, boreliacidal, or boreliacidal. Can I have all the information, please? Yeah, uh, the pronunciations are boreliacidal, boreliacidal, or boreliacidal. It's an adjective, and it's New Latin from a French eponym. It means relating to medicine that destroys the causative agent of Lyme disease. And uh, the sense is uh, the scientists developed a new method to detect boreliacidal antibodies in patients. Boreliacidal. B O R R E L I A C I D A L. Boreliacidal. That is correct. Our next speller is speller number 79. Oh. Uh, just a second. All right, sorry. Okay, uh, your word is licory. Licory? Yeah. May I have the language of origin? Uh, it's Portuguese from Tupi. Licory. 
can I have the um, can I have the definition? Yeah, uh, it's a Brazilian palm tree. Licory, can I have all the information? Uh, the only pronunciation is licory. It's a noun and it's Portuguese from Tupi. It's a Brazilian palm tree, and uh, the sentence is wax obtained from the leaves of licory trees can be used in lubricants and polishes. Is there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, licory. Licory? Yeah. Uh, can I have the definition again? Uh, it's a Brazilian palm tree. And can I, have the, can I have the language of origin again? Yeah, it's Portuguese from Tupi. It's 35 seconds remaining. Okay. Lickery. L I C U R Y. Lickery. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 116. Uh, your word is Bela Felt. Um, can I have all the information, please? Yeah, the only pronunciation is Bielefeld. It's a noun, and it's a German geographical name. It means a city in West Central Germany. And uh, the sense is Bielefeld, Germany, is home to a castle built around 1250. Um, can you repeat the definition, please? Uh, Bielefeld is a city in West Central Germany. Can you please repeat all the information? Yeah, uh, the word is Bielefeld. It's a noun and it's a German geographical name and it means a city in West Central Germany. Uh, the sentence is Bielefeld, Germany is home to a castle built around 1250. Bielefeld, uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? It's just the one, Bielefeld. Um, Bielefeld. Yeah. B I E L. Can I start over, please? Yeah. Bielefeld. B I E L E F E L D. Bielefeld. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 125. Hi. Uh, your word is methapyrrolene. Could I have all of the information, please? Yeah, uh, the word is methapyrrolene or methapyrrolene. It's an antihistamine drug formerly used as a mild sedative in, pro in proprietary sleep-inducing sleep -inducing drugs. Um, it's it's made up of ISV parts, and the sense is manufacturers withdrew methapyrrolene products in 1979 due to its carcinogenic properties. Does this contain the Latin pyre, meaning fire? Um, yes. Does this contain the ISV E, meaning unsaturated carbon compound? Um, it does, yes. Uh, but could you repeat the word, please? Yeah, the word is methapyrrolene or methapyrrolene. Could you repeat the definition? It's an antihistamine drug formerly used in mild sedative, formerly used as a mild sedative in proprietary sleep-inducing drugs. Methapyrrolene, uh, could you repeat the language of origin one more time? Uh, it's just made up of ice parts. Okay. Thank you. 
methapyrrolene, uh, M-E-T-H-A-P-Y-R-I-L-E-N-E. -E. Yep, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of round six. Um, so we had two spellers misspell in this round. Speller 16, Dharani Nanda Kumar. Speller 41, Aryan Kedgar. Um, both of you are tying for ninth place. Um, and with that will come a $100 cash prize as well as a trophy from Spell Pundit. So congratulations, you both. You spelled some really hard words and did a great job. So thank you both so much. Um, let's take... Or I guess, yeah, let's go into round seven. We'll take a break after round seven, um, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so let's begin round seven with Speller 19. Your word is Tejeno. Can you repeat the word, please? Tejeno. Tejeno? Yeah. Tajeno. 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 Sounds right. Tajeno. Um, can I have all the information? Tajeno is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Yiddish, and it means a prayer in Yiddish used by Jewish women only. The sentence is the Tajeno. Prayers were offered before the fast of Monday and Thursday. Tahina. Um, can I raise the volume a bit? Can you repeat the word? Tahina. Tahina. No. Tahina. 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 Sounds right. Tahina. Um, can you repeat all the information? You have 45 seconds remaining. The word is Tahina. It's a noun. It's from Yiddish, and it means a prayer in Yiddish used by Jewish women only. Um, the Tahina prayers were offered before the fast on Monday and Thursday. Tahina. Tahina. Um, Tahina. 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 Twenty seconds. Um, can you repeat the pronunciation? Tahina. Tahina. Ten seconds. The word correctly. Tahina. Um, T O C H H I N A T H. Tahina. Sorry, I was on you. Uh, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is T E H I N N A H. Tahina. Great guess. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 38. Your word is compti. Um, can you please repeat the word? Compti. Cobti. Compti. Cobti. Compti. Compti. May I have the definition, please? Any of several tough woody plants of the genus Zamia of Florida and tropical America. Um, Compti. May I have the word used in a sentence? The roots and half buried stems of Compti yield an arrow root. Um, can you please repeat the word? Compti. 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 Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is just the one Compti. Compti. Um, okay. Uh, can I please have the language of origin? Compti is from Seminole. Okay, Compti. Can I please have the definition and language of origin? 
Compti is from Seminole, and it means any of several tough woody plants on the genus Zamia of Florida and tropical America. Compti. Okay. Compti. And can you please use the word in a sentence? The roots and half-buried stems of Compti yield an arrow root. Okay. Um, and can you please repeat the word again? Compti. Compti. Am I saying that correctly? Sounds right. Okay. Um, Compti. Um... 45 seconds. Okay. Compti. Uh, C O M T I E. Compti. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C O M P T I E. Uh, C O M P T I E. Okay, thank you. The next speller is speller sixty one. Your word is sensive. Can you repeat the word? Sensive. Can I have everything? Sensive is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective, it's from French, and it means relating to a payment made to a landlord, usually a peasant in feudal France. From the 16th to 18th centuries, the sensive was the most common form of peasant landholding. Sensive. Sensive. Um, sensive. Can I have the part of speech? Sensive is an adjective. Can I have the definition again? Yes, sensible is an adjective, it's from French. It means relating to a payment made to a landlord, usually a peasant in feudal France. Um, from the 16th to 18th centuries, the sensible was the most common form of peasant landholding. C-E-N-S-I-V-E, sensible. That's correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 62. Your word is corony. Corony, can I have all the information? Corony is the only pronunciation. It's a, it's a plural noun, it's from Czech, and it means the, the basic monetary unit of the former Czechoslovakia. The corny? sentence is corony, yeah. The sentence is, Benjamin has collected many corony coins, including millennium commemorative coins. Corony. Um, put on now. Um, can I have the part of speech again? Corony is a plural noun. Okay. Um, can I have the sentence again? Benjamin has collected many corony coins, including millennium commemorative coins. Corny. Okay. O. R. And that is correct. Our next speller is speller 63. Your word is dimension. Can you repeat the def um sorry, can you repeat the word I mean? Dimension. Dimension, can I have the definition? Dimension means ever relating to a division of the Carboniferous in Europe. Can I have all the information? Dimension is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's international scientific vocabulary from a Belgian geographical name and means ever relating to a division of the Carboniferous in Europe. The sentence is the Dimension is named for the Belgian city and province where strata of this age are present. Dimension. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one Dinanchin. Can I have the language of origin? It's international scientific vocabulary from, Bel from a Belgian geographical name. Dinanchin, does this contain the English on meaning relating to? Uh, yes. Dinanchin, connect the part of speech. Dimension is a noun. You have 45 seconds left. Uh, it's, it's an adjective. 
Oh, sorry. Janan Chen. D. 30 second. Oh, sorry. I N A N T I A N. Janan Chen. That is correct. Thank you. Our next, our next speller is speller 79. Hello. Your word is pyrocene. Can you repeat that? Pyrocene. Pyrocene. May I have the language of origin? Pyrocene is from international scientific vocabulary. And can I have the definition? A tetracyclic parent hydrocarbon regarded as derived from asinaphthene. Pyrocene. Pyrocene. Does this come from the Greek word pyro meaning fire? Pyrocene, does this come from the ISV root ene, meaning unsaturated carbon compound? Yeah. Pyrocene, can I have all the information again? Yes. Um, pyrocene, you can pronounce pyrocene or pyrocene. It's a noun. It's an international scientific vocabulary, and it means a tetracyclic parent hydrocarbon regarded as derived from asinaphthene. The researcher used a two-dimensional X-ray diffraction method to determine the crystal structure of pyrocene. Pyrocene, does this come from Latin ic meaning relating to? Um, I don't see that again. Pyrocene, can I pull the information again? Yeah. The word can be pronounced pyrocene or pyrocene. It's a noun. It's from international scientific vocabulary, and it means a tetracyclic parent hydrocarbon regarded as derived from asinaphthene. The researcher used a two-dimensional X-ray diffraction method to determine the crystal structure of pyrocene. Pyrocene. Can you repeat the word? Pyrocene or pyrocene. So pyrocene or pyrocene. And can you repeat the origin? You've it's from international scientific vocabulary. You're 15 seconds. Pyrocene, P Y R. I C E N E, pyrocene. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is P Y R A C E N E. Thank you. Let's try. Uh, the next word, or sorry, the next speller is uh, number 116. Your word is Crossostria. Can you repeat that, please? Crossostria. Press Austria. Crossostria. Oh, Crossostria. Um, can I have all the information, please? Yeah. Crossostria is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a genus of bivalve mollusks comprising oysters. Crossostria is a common edible oyster of Atlantic coast of North America. Crossostria. Um, can you uh, can you repeat the definition, please? Yes, Crossostria means a genus of bivalve mollusks comprising oysters. Um, does it come from Greek like osteo, meaning bone? Um, I don't see that given here. Um, can you repeat all the information, please? Yeah. Crossostria is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a genus of bivalve mollusks comprising oysters. Crossostria is the common edible oyster of, Atlant of the Atlantic coast of North America. Crossostria. Um, you have 40 seconds remaining. Um, can you repeat? Oh, sorry. Uh, Crossostria. C R A S S O S T R E A. Crossostria. That is correct. And uh, the last speller for this round uh, is speller number 125. Your word is aggregation. Uh, this could be confused with a similar words. So I'm going to give you all the information. Um, the word's pronunciation is aggregation. 
It's a plural noun. It's from French, and it means a high-level competitive exam at French universities for the professorship position. Gabrielle and her colleague gave several lessons in front of a committee to pass their aggregation. Um, could you repeat the language of origin, please? It's from French. Uh, could you repeat the pronunciation? Aggregation. Uh, could you repeat the definition, please? It means a high-level com uh, competitive exam at French universities for the professorship position. It's plural noun. Aggregation. A G R E G A T I O N aggregation. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is A G R E G A T I O N S aggregation. Oh. Okay. Um, let's see, end of round seven. Um, and oh my gosh, okay, these were hard words. So all of you did such a great job. Um, in this round, we had four spellers misspell. Um, so this would be speller 19, um, Vikrant, um, speller 38, Shraddha, speller 79, Abilash, and speller 125, Roy. All of you did a, an amazing job. Um, and all of you will be getting fifth place. So $100 cash prize and the trophy. Um, yeah, you all should be super, super proud of what you've done and how you spelled today and congratulations great job um i put an appeal in the chat like um would you mind reviewing it okay uh yeah let's take a quick break so it's 15 um let's come back at 20 and then um judges we might go into a breakout room in a second okay thank you Had one more appeal. We had one more appeal on this last round for Speller 125. Um, judges just um, reviewed. So we we did give the correct part of speech um, at the end, right before the speller spelled the word. Um, that and that would have been um, the right information in order to be able to to spell it correctly. So we're also unable to accept that appeal. So sorry about that. But congratulations, all of you guys did a really really great job. Okay, um, if everyone is ready, all spellers are back, looks like it. Okay, um, let's get started with round eight. Are we, are judges ready? Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's get started with speller 19. Your word is Alvarisa. Um, I don't think Speller 19 is here. Can you speak up a little bit? Um, I don't think Speller 19 is here. Speller oh, 61. I'm at Speller 61. Sorry about that. OK, uh, your word is Alberisa. Um, can you repeat the word? Alberisa. 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 Can I have everything? Alberisa is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Spanish, and it means a whitish, chalky soil of southern Spain, in which wine grapes for sherry are grown. The city of Jerez in southern Spain is known for vineyard landscape with gentle hills and white alberisa soil. Alberisa. Can I have the part of speech? Alberisa is a noun. Can I have the origin again? Alberisa is from Spanish. Can you repeat the word one more time? Sorry, can you say it again? Uh, can you repeat the word one more time? Alberisa. 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 Sounds right. A L B A R I Z A. 
That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 62. Your word is kasabi. Um, kasabi, can I have all, all of the information? Kasabi is a noun, it's from Spanish. Kasabi is the only pronunciation and it means a fish of the Southern US and West Indies. The sentence is, Marta prepared kasabi tortillas for the family dinner, kasabi. Are there any alternates? There is just the one kasabi. Kasabi? Uh, can I have the language of origin again? Kasabi is from Spanish. Um, and can I have the part of speech? Now. Kasabi, C-A-S-A-B-E. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 63. Your word is beta serum. Can you repeat the word? Beta serum. Beta serum? Beta serum. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is just the one beta serum. Can you repeat the word? Beta serum. Is the word beta serum or beta serum? Beta serum. Beta serum. Beta serum. Am I saying that right? Beta serum. Sounds right. Can I have the definition? A brand name used for preparation of a recombinant form of an interferon that is produced especially by fibroblasts. Beta Ceron. Never language of origin. It's from a trademark. Can you repeat the word again? Beta Ceron. I have all the information. Beta Ceron is the only pronunciation. It's the noun. It's from a trademark. And it means a brand name used for preparation of a recombinant form of interferon that is produced especially by fibroblasts. The doctor prescribed a beta serum to treat relapsing form of multiple sclerosis. Beta serum. Am I saying the word right? Beta serum. Can you say it again? Beta serum. Beta serum. Can you say it again? 30 seconds remaining. Beta serum. Beta serum. Beta serum. Sounds right. Beta serum. B E T A. C E R O N beta serum. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is B E T A S E R O N. Great try. Our next speller is speller 116. Your word is Razafor. Can you repeat that, please? Razafor. Razafor. Um, can I have all the information, please? Razafor is the only pronunciation. No, actually, no. Sorry, my, my bad. Are you pronounce Razafor or Razafor? It's a noun. It's from Middle Greek plus Greek, and it means a member of a monastic order who has not yet passed through the novitiate a novice. The Razafor had just recently joined the monastic order and it was relatively inexperienced. Razafor. Um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? It's from, the first part's from Middle Greek and the second part is Greek. Uh, can you repeat the definition, please? A member of a monastic order who has not yet passed through the novitiate. Uh, does it come from Greek for meaning like passing through? I, I can't hear you, sir. Say that again. 
uh, does it come from Greek for meaning passing through? Uh, okay. Um, can you please repeat all the information? Forty-five seconds. Yes. The word is razafor or razafor. It's a noun. The first part's from Middle Greek. The second part's from Greek, and it means a member of a monastic order who has not yet passed through the novitiate, a novice. The razafor had just recently joined the monastic order and was relatively inexperienced. Razafor. Twenty-five seconds. Razafor. R H. A S O P H O R E Razafor. That is correct. Okay, that's the end of round eight. Um, we had one speller misspell in this round, um, a speller 63 Surya. So you're getting, or you're in fourth place, which is a $100 cash prize and um, a trophy. So congratulations, you did a great job. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> or sorry, sorry, I mis uh, misspoke. That's a $200 cash prize. Uh, but yes, okay. Amazing. Um, so we're also at our top three spellers, which is um, amazing. So uh, speller 61, Bithya, speller 62, Dave, and speller 116, Yash. Um, we're in our top three, congratulations. Um, let's go straight into round nine, um, starting with Speller 61. Your word is Toridonian. Can you repeat the word? Toridonian. Could I have everything? Yeah, the word's only pronunciation is Toridonian. It's an adjective. The first part's from the Scottish geographical name, the second part's from English, and it means of relating to or constituting a division of the Precambrian. The sentence is Toridonian groups, rocks of Scotland, have been considered one of the best records of Proterozoic terrestrial sedimentation. Toridonian. Can I have the part of speech? Toridonian is an adjective. Toridonian, T-O-R-R-I-D-O-N-I-A-N, Toridonian. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 62. Your word is lichnophora. Lichnophora. Um, okay. Can I have the definition? GS definition? Uh, yeah, definition. Like Nafra means a genus of protozoans with a posterior disc. Um, okay. Fora meaning one that bears three. Can you say that again? Sorry. Um, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you just say that again? Fora Greek, one that bears. Give me one second. Um, you're on the right track. Uh, Lycanon, Greek winnowing fan. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Lycanophora. L I C N O P H O R A. That is correct. Good job. Uh, our next speller is speller 116. Your word is perukier. Um, can I have all the information, please? The word can be pronounced perukier, 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 perukier. Um, it's a noun. It's from French, and it means a person that makes or sells wigs. The perukier in the city is very popular for his skills in hairdressing. Perukier. Can you repeat the language of origin, please? It's from French. Um, can you please repeat all the information? 
Yes, the word can be pronounced parukir, parakir, parakir, parake. Um, it's a noun, it's from French, and it means a person that makes or sells wigs. Um, the sentence is the parukir in the city is very popular for his skills in hairdressing. Um, does it come from French or meaning uh, like one who does? Sorry, give me one second. Um, I don't see that here. 45 seconds. Can you please uh, repeat the definition? Yes, uh, perukier means a person that sells wigs. Um, perukier, P-E-R-U-K-I-E-R, -E -E perukier. That is correct. Okay, um, that's the end of, sorry, that's the end of round nine, um, perfect round. So great job, everyone. Um, okay, we're gonna take a short break. So it's 37, let's, we'll come back around uh, like 42, 43. Um, and judges, I'll put us in a breakout room. Um, judges, everyone. Great. Okay, so let's get started with round 10 then, um, beginning with Speller 61. Your word is pata. Uh, this has a near homonym, so I'm going to give you all the information. Uh, pata is a noun. Um, it's Hindi from Sanskrit, and it means a certificate of tenure, title, lead, or lease. It means uh, the sentence is, a restrictive clause in the pata limited the land use to charitable purposes only. Pata. Can I have the part of speech? Pata is a noun. Pata. P-O-T-T-A-H. Pata. Sorry, that is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller 62. Your word is gimpy. Gimpy. Um, can you give the forward name? Uh, it's from an Australian geographical name. Okay. Um, definition. An Australian nettle tree having foliage and twigs covered with stinging hairs. Can you speak up a bit? A uh, gimpy. Yeah. G y m p i e. Gimpy. That is correct. Okay, uh, our next speller is speller 116. Your word is civilian. Civilian, um, can I have all the information, please? Civilian is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective. Um, the word is international scientific vocabulary from an Egyptian geographical name. It means other relating to a Mesolithic culture of Upper Egypt characterized by microlithic flint tools and composite weapons using microliths. Civilian tool implements found along the Nile River were dated to 12,000 BC or earlier. Civilian. Civilian. Um, Wait, um, the word is civilian. 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 Okay, um, can you please repeat all the information? The word is civilian. It's an adjective. The word is international scientific vocabulary from an Egyptian geographical name. And it means other relating to a Mesolithic culture of Upper Egypt characterized by microlithic flint tools and composite weapons using microliths. Um, civilian tool implements found along the Nile River were dated to 12,000 BC or earlier. Civilian. Civilian. S E B I L I A N. Civilian. That is correct. Okay. With that, let's go into round 11, starting with Speller 61.
Your word is Polynesia. Could you repeat the word? Polynesia. Could I have everything? The word can you pronounce Polynesia, Polynesia, Polynesia. Um, it's a noun, it's from New Latin, and it means a genus of widely distributed herbs having palmate leaves and flowers with many stamens of unequal lengths. The foliage of Polynesia exudes a strong, peculiar smell. Polynesia. Uh, does this word come from Greek poly meaning many? Sorry, could you repeat that again? Uh, does this word come from the Greek poly meaning many? I don't, <clears throat> sorry, I don't see that here. Or actually, I yes, guess. yes it does. Okay, does it come from the Greek anise meaning unequal? Um, sorry, give me one second. It does. It does, okay. Okay, uh, can you repeat the word again? Polynesia. Polynesia. P-O-L-A-N-I-S-I-A. -I Polynesia. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 62. Your word is Beresivite. Beresivite. Can I have all the information? Yes. Um, Beresivite is the only pronunciation. It's a noun, and it's French from a USSR geographical name. It means a mineral perhaps consisting of a deep red lead chromate oxide carbonate. Um, the sentence is, the Beresivite is abundant in some mines in the Ural Mountain system in Russia. Beresivite. Beresivite. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Could you speak a little bit louder? Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There is just the one Beresivite. Beresivite. B-E-R-E-S-O-V-I-T-E. -E -E. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 116. Your word is eodicid. Um, eodicid. Uh, can, can I have all the information, please? Eodicid is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a member of a genus of minute Cambrian trilobites. The sentence is: The eodicid is visible only under the microscope. Microscope. Eodicid. Um. Can I have the language of origin again, please? Yes, it's from New Latin. Can you please repeat all the information again? Yeah, sure. Um, the word's only pronunciation is eodicid. It's a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a member of a genus of minute Cambrian trilobites. The sentence is, the eodicid is visible only under the microscope. Eodicid. Can you say it one more time, please? Eodicid. Eodicid. Um, eodicid, E O D I S C I D, eodicid. That is correct. It's the end of round 11, also another perfect round. Um, yeah, let's go into round 12, speller 61. Your word is ferrocactus. Can you repeat the word? Ferrocactus. I have everything. The word came from ferrocactus or ferrocactus. It's a noun. It's New Latin from Latin, and it means a genus of nearly globular spiny plants of, New Me of Mexico and the adjacent U.S. having large funnel-shaped flowers and dried fruits. The sentence is: Gina has a ferrocactus in a glazed ceramic pot on her desk. Um, can you repeat the word again? Sorry, can you say that again? Could you repeat the word again? Ferrocactus. Ferrocactus. F-E-R-O-C-A-C-T-U-S. 
That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 62. Your word is phimatorisin. Phimatorisin. Uh, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah, yes. Phimatorisin. Um, does this come from the Greek risa, meaning wrinkle? Could you read what you said for the definition? Um, wrinkle. Uh, you're on the right track. Um, can I have the definition? Yes, phimatorisin means for the root, melanin pigment. Sorry, for yeah, the I root, guess for the root, it's, it's a no. It's a, it's a clear no, yeah. Okay, uh, do you ask me definition? Yeah. Phimatorisin means a melanin pigment found in certain melanotic tumors in man and in the urine of persons affected with them. Okay, phimatorisin, P-H-Y-M-A-T-O-R-H-Y-S-I-N, phimatorisin. Yes, that is correct. Our next speller is speller 116. Your word is crucially. Crucially, um, can I have all the information, please? Yeah, um, so the word can be pronounced crucially or crucially. It's an adjective, it's from Middle French, and it means semi decorated with a cross with a crossbar near the end of each arm. Glover has azure crucially, semi in several coats of arms. Um, crucially or crucially. Um, can you repeat the, the language of origin, please? It's your middle French. Uh, can I have all the information? The word came pronounced crucially or crucially. It's an adjective. It's from middle French, and it means semi decorated with a cross with a crossbar near the end of each arm. Glover has azure crucially, semi in several coats of arms. Um. Wait, are there any alternate pronunciations? There is just crucially or crucially. Crucially. Can I start over, please? Yeah. Crucially. C R U S I L Y. Crucially. That is correct. Hi, sorry to interrupt. Hey, Ditya, so you are so far from the laptop, it's very hard to hear and see you. Uh, can you move closer to the laptop, please, so that we can hear you well? Okay, all right. Um, yeah, let's go into round 13 with Speller 61. Just give us a second. Um, okay. uh, your word is Bisho. Could you repeat the word? Bisho. Could I have everything? Uh, Bisho is a noun. Bisho is the only pronunciation. It's from Maka and it's a large blackish food fish of the North Pacific Ocean. Um, the sentence is the most popular menu item in the famous seafood restaurant is soy marinated in the show served with bok choy and mushrooms. Could I have the part of speech? The show is a noun. The show, B E S H O W, the show. That is correct. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 62. Your word is Berwick. Berwick, can I have the definition? Berwick means a detached portion of farmland that belonged to a medieval manor and was reserved for the Lord's own use. Can I have the language of origin? Um, it's from Old English. Berwick, 
B E R E W I C K. Berwick. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 160. Your word is rapetiace. Um, rapetiace. Uh, can I have all the information, please? The word's only pronunciation is rapetiace. It's a plural noun. It's New Latin. It means a family of South American herbs. The Rapetiaceae are a family of flowering plants with 94 species, mostly found in South America and tropical West Africa. Rapetiaceae. Um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? Yes, uh, Rapetiaceae is from New Latin. Um, Can you please repeat all the information? Yes, Rapetiaceae is the only pronunciation. It's from New Latin. It's a plural noun. It means a family of South American herbs. The sentence is the Rapetiaceae are a family of flowering plants with 94 species, mostly found in South America and tropical West Africa. Um, what's the part of speech again? Uh, it's a plural noun. 45 seconds remaining. Um, R-A-P-A-T-E-A-C-E-A-E, R-A-P-A-T-E-A-C-E. That is correct, good job. Okay, that's the end of round 13. Um, let's go into round 14. Speller 61. Your word is Caffrarian. Can you repeat the word? Caffrarian. Could I have everything? The word can be pronounced Caffrarian, 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 or Caffrarian. Uh, um, it's an adjective. Um, it's from a geographical name plus an English part, and it means relating to our being the biogeographic province or subregion that includes the Union of South Africa and adjacent areas. Ethan is spending the summer break studying about 30 different Caffrarian species. Could you repeat the word again? Caffrarian. Caffrarian. K A. F F R A R I A N, Caffarian. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, our next speller is speller 62. Your word is Galar. Galar, can I have all the, inform um, all the information? Galar is a noun. It's from a native name in India, and it means a sheep disease common in India and caused by infestation with immature param paramphistome flukes. The Galar disease is also called Pitto and is the, one of the major diseases affecting sheep in Northern India. Galar. Galar? Um, okay, G-I-L-L-A-R, Galar. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 116. Your word is anatanasia. Anatanasia, can I have um can I have the language of origin, please? Yeah. Um anatanasia is a plural noun and it comes from New Latin. Um can I have all the information, please? Anatanasia um, is the only pronunciation. It's a plural noun, it's from New Latin, and it means a suborder comprising bivalve mollusks. Dr. Healy published a review of bivalve shells of the group Anatanasia from the west coast of America. Anatanasia. Um, can you repeat it, please? Yes, Anatanasia. Wait, is it Anatanasia or Anatanasia? Anatanasia. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? 
There's just the one anatanasia. Anatanasia. A N. Um, can I start over, please? Yeah. Anatanasia. A N A. T I N A C E A, and a tenation. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's the end of the round. We are going to take a quick break. So it is 02. Let's come back at right, like, yeah, 07 or so. Judges and creating a breakout room. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, we are back, um, let's do, okay, so we're at round four, or sorry, 15, uh, starting with Speller 61. Okay, uh, your word is Vorati. Can you repeat the word? Yeah, um, Vorati. Can I have everything? Yeah, Borati is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. Um, it's from Swahili and it means a mangrove pole. The sentence is a Borati is often very long and can be used to build a variety of structures uh, in rural set settings. Can I have the part of speech? Yes, uh, Borati is a noun. Can I have the origin again? Language origin? Yeah. Borati is from Swahili. Borati, B-O-R-I-T-Y, Borati. That is correct. Our next speller is speller 62. Thank you. Your word is Mataguri. Um, Matagori. Um, can I have D language of origin? Matagori is from a modification of Maori. Matagori, can I have D definition? Oh, my bad. Mispronunciation on my part. Uh, Matagori. Um, what's the origin? Matagori. Oh, okay. Um, Definition. Yeah, uh, matagori comes from uh, a modification of Maori, and it means um, a New Zealand shrub or tree of the family Ramnaceae having stout, sharp spines used by the Maoris for tattooing. Matagori, M A T A G O U R I. Matagori. The last three letters cut out. Could you repeat the whole spelling a little bit louder? M A T A G O U R I. That is correct. Good job. Our next speller is speller 116. Uh, okay. Your word is geocerine. Geocerine. Um, can I have all the information, please? Geocerine is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. Um, it's first parts from Greek, second parts from Latin, and third parts from German. Um, and it means a mineral consisting of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen occurring as a white waxy substance of brown coal. The sentence is geocerine is soluble in alcohol. Um, wait, can you repeat the definition, please? Yes. Um, Geocerine means a mineral consisting of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen occurring as a white waxy substance in brown coal. Um, does it come from Latin ser meaning wax? Yes, it does. Um, does it come from like Greek geo meaning like earth? 
Yes. Yes, it does. Um, can you please repeat all the information? The word's only pronunciation is geocerine. It's a noun. Um, it's from first part's Greek, second part's Latin, and third part's German. And it means a mineral consisting of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen occurring as a white wax substance in brown coal. Geocerine is soluble in alcohol. Geocerine. Um, can you repeat the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Geocerine. 45 seconds remaining. G E O C E R A I N Geocerine. That is correct. Good job. Okay, that's the end of round 16, or sorry, 15. Um, let's go into round 16 with uh, Speller 61. Your word is mullet. Can you repeat the word? Mullet. Could I have everything? Mollet is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's Middle English from Middle French, and it means a star with five straight edge points or rays as a charge or a mark of cadency for a third sun. The sentence is the mollet or star is indicative of the upward surging spirit. Mollet. Could you give me the part of speech? Yes, mollet is a noun. Could you repeat the word again? Yes, mullet. Mullet. M O L E T. Mullet. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, speller 62. Your word is Cindy Osiris. Okay. Um, Cindy Osiris. S Y N D Y O C E R A S. Cindy Osiris. Um, that is correct. Speller one six. Your word is Oreocaria. Or oh, sorry, Oreocaria. Um, Oreocaria. Uh, can I? have um can I have all the information please uh yes um the word can be pronounced oreocaria or oreocaria it's a noun um it's new latin from greek and it means a genus of perennial herbs that resemble forget-me-nots have leafy stems and small white or yellow flowers in one-sided spikes or racemes um and are found in the western hemisphere um, some species of Oreo carrier are endangered and can only be found in Texas. Um, can you repeat the part of speech, please? Oreo carrier is a noun. Um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? Yes, Oreo carrier um, is New Latin from Greek. Oreo caria, O R E O C A R Y A, Oreo caria. That is correct. Okay, that's the end of round 16. Um, let's go into round 17. Spell it order 61. Your word is masistosiris. Could you repeat the word? Masistosiris. Could I have everything? Masistosiris is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's New Latin um, from Greek plus Latin. And it means a genus of nematode worms, including a common parasite of the abomasum, 
of domesticated ruminants and the stomach of swine. Mysticeris worms are a known blood sucking parasite to cattle. Mysticeris. Can I have the part of speech? It's a noun. Could you repeat the word again? Mysticeris. Masisto serious. Can you come close to the laptop and uh, we don't see your face very well? Can you bring it down your laptop? We see the roof, not your, yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, could you repeat the word again? Masisto serious. Masisto serious. M. E C I S T O C I R R U S, Mrs. Dosiris. That is correct. Thank you. Your word is many anthes. Many anthes. Um... Old information. The word can be pronounced many antes or many antes. Um, it's a noun. It's New Latin from Greek and it means a genus of bog plants having thickish creeping rootstocks and racemose flowers. The many antes plant in our backyard attracts many butterflies and honeybees. Many antes. Anthos Greek flower. Yes, that's correct. Many anties. M E N Y A N T H E S. Many anties. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 116. Your word is Cephaline. Um, cephaline, can I have all the information, please? Yes, um, the word can be pronounced cephaline or cephaline. Um, it's a noun, it's from interna it's international scientific vocabulary from New Latin. I mean, it's a colorless crystalline alkaloid extracted from ipecac root. Um, cephaline is one of the primary alkaloids extracted from ipecac root that can irritate the stomach lining. Um, can you repeat the part of speech, please? Yes, the cephaline is a noun. Um, what's the um, language of origin? Cephaline is international scientific vocabulary from New Latin. Um, what's the definition? It means a colorless crystalline alkaloid extracted from ipecac root. Uh, can you repeat it, please? Cephaline. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There is cephaline and cephaline. Um, can you can you please repeat all the information? The word can be pronounced cephaline or cephaline. Um, it's a noun. It's international scientific vocabulary from New Latin, and it means a colorless crystalline alkaloid extracted from ipecac root. Cephaline is one of the primary alkaloids extracted from ipecac root that can irritate stomach lining. 25 um, seconds. Cephaline. C-E-P-H-A-E-L-I-N-E, cephaline. That is correct. Okay, um, that is the end of, what round were we on? Sorry, that's the end of round um 17 17 yes okay let's go into round 18 um yeah color 61 your word is mutasaru could you repeat the word mutasaru could i have everything the word carry pro uh, the word's only pronunciation is mutasaru um, it's a noun. It's Turkish from Arabic. 
It means an administrative authority of various sandaks. Um, it means a mutas, sorry, the sentences, a mutasarv would usually be directly appointed by the Sultan. Mutasarv. Uh, mutasarv. Yeah, mutasarv. Oh. Um, mutasarv. M U T A S A R R I F, Mutasarif. Uh, that is correct. Thank you. Speller sixty two. Your word is metallothionine. Uh, metallothionine. Um, uh, can metal you look at the camera? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Metal, um, metal. Language. Uh, Greek. That's correct. Thio, ISV. Sulfur, that's correct. Metallothionine, M-E-T-A. L-L-O-T-H-I-O-N-E-I-N, metallothionine. That is correct, good job. Speller 116. Your word is Kasali. Kasali? Kasali. Um, what's the language of origin? It's from an Italian eponym. Uh, can I have all the information, please? Kasali is the only pronunciation, it's a noun. It comes from an Italian eponym, and it means a method of synthesizing ammonia similar in principle to that Haber process. The Casali process was developed as an alternative to the traditional Haber process for the production of ammonia. Uh, wait, did you say it's from Italian? From an Italian eponym. Um, wait, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's just the one Casali. Casali? Can you repeat the definition, please? Yes. Um, Kasali means a method of synthesizing ammonia similar in principle to the Haber process. Kasali. C-A-S-A-L-E, Kasali. That is correct, good job. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of round 18. Let's go into round 19. Speller 61. Your word is Littleton. Could you repeat the word? Littleton. Could I have everything? Littleton is the only pronunciation um, it's a noun, um, it's from New Zealand geographical name, and it means a borough on the South Island, New Zealand. Littleton is a port town close to the east coast of the South Island of New Zealand. Littleton. Littleton. L-Y-T-T-E-L-T-O-N. Littleton. That is correct. Thank you. Your word is glitterton. Definition. Glitterton, and it means a white crystalline powder used especially as an, sorry, Wrong word. a white crystalline, sorry, a mountain in Norway in the Jotunheim range, the highest in Scandinavia. Um, can you repeat the word? Glitterton. Glitterton? 
Glitterton. Glitterton. Language of origin. Comes from a geographical name. Um. Glitterton. Oh, Y T T E R T O N. Literation. Could you repeat your spelling? The second half cut out. G L Y T T E R T O N. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is G L I T T E R. T I N D, glitter tin. Okay, thank you. Nice, nice class. Speller 116. Just give me a brief second. Your word is. Chloritone. Chloritone. Um, can I have all the information, please? Chloritone is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. Um, it comes from a former U.S. registered trademark, and it means a white crystalline alcohol with a camphor-like odor and taste that is made by the reaction of acetone and chloroform. Chloritone is considered a local anesthetic. Um. Wait, what's the language of origin? Chloritone is from a former U.S. registered trademark. Uh, can you repeat all the information, please? Yeah. Um, chloritone is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. Um, it's from a, for a former U.S. registered trademark. It means a white crystalline alcohol with a camphor-like odor and taste that is made by the reaction of acetone and chloroform. Chloritone is considered a local anesthetic. Uh, does it come from Greek chlor, meaning uh, like green? I don't see that listed here. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat the language of origin, please? It's from a former U.S. registered trademark. Um, and can you say the word one more time, please? Chloritone. Chloritone. C H L O R E T O N E. Chloritone. That is correct. Good job. Okay, so that is the end of round 19. Um, and we did have one speller misspell in this round. So speller 62, Dave. Uh, great job <laughs> spelling a lot of really hard words. Um, you are in third place. So um, that is a $500 cash prize as well as a trophy. So congratulations, you did amazing. And okay. Um, do we want a break to figure out anything or are we good to go judges? Can we take like a three minute break? Okay, yeah, spellers. Um, so it's 36, let's come back at 40. Three more rounds. And after those three rounds, we will declare both of you as champions or co-champions. So um, let's get started with round 20, speller 61. And could you tilt your camera down so that we can see you? Your word is ad viracundiam. Can you repeat the word? Ad viracundiam. Could I have everything? Yes. The word came pronounced ad viracundiam, ad viracundiam. It's an adverb, it's from Latin, and it means uh, to modesty. The sentence is ad viracundiam is, much, is more commonly known as, a, as an appeal to authority, where an appeal is made to the testimony of an authority outside their field of expertise. Could I have the part of speech? Yes, um, it's an adverb. Can you repeat the word again? 
Yes, it's ad vericundium or ad vericundium. Ad vericundium. A D V E R R E C U N D I A M. Ad vericundium. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. Your word is Malava Malka. Can you repeat that, please? Malava Malka. Um, can I have all the information, please? Yeah. Um, so the word's only pronunciation is Malava Malka. It's a noun, it's from Hebrew, and it means a traditional weekly ceremony observed chiefly by Hasidim or on Saturday evening to build Hasidim on Saturday evening to bid farewell to the Queen's Sabbath and marked by feasting, singing, and dancing. The sentence is Malava Malka is the name of the meal held by Jews after the Sabbath or on Saturday evening. Malava Malka. Um, does it come from Greek mel meaning honey? I'm checking on that. I don't see that here. It does. Um, can I? Can you please repeat all the information? Uh, yeah. So the word is pronounced Malava Malka. That's the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Hebrew, and it means a traditional weekly ceremony observed chiefly by Hasidim on Saturday evening to bid farewell to the Queen's Sabbath and marked by feasting, singing, and dancing. Malava Malka is the name of the meal held by Jews after the Sabbath or on Saturday evening. Um, wait, and are there any alternate pronunciations? There is none. There's just the one Malava Malka. Malava Malka. Malava Malka. Malava Malka. M E L A V E H. M A L K A H. Malava Malka. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. This. Two seconds. Okay, that's the end of round 20. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go into round 21 with Speller 61. Okay. Your word is your songs. Can you repeat the word? Your songs. Can I have everything? Yes. Um, the word can you pronounce your songs, your songs, your songs. Um, it's a noun. It's from a French name, and it means the interior medullary villa. The vir sans is a prominent valve in the great cardiac vein where it turns around the obtuse margin to become the coronary sinus. Vir sans. Vir sans. Vir sans. Can I have everything again? Yes. So the word came from uh, vir sans, vir sans, vir sans. Um, it's a noun, it's from French name. Um, it means the anterior medullary velum. And the sentence is the viosons is a prominent valve in the great cardiac vein where it turns around the obtuse margin to become the coronary sinus. Can you repeat the word again? Yes. Viosons, viosons, or viosons. Can you repeat the pronunciation one more time? Yes. Uh, vieux songs, vieux songs, vieux songs. 30 seconds. Vieux songs, V I E U S S E N S. That is correct. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, your word is sea prey. Cypress. Cypre or Cypre? Cypre. Um, can I have all the information, please? Yes. Um, the word can be pronounced Cypre or Cypre. Um, it's an adverb. It's from Anglo French and it means in accordance with a doctrine. Um, the sentence is the document was amended according to Cypre. Um, what's the language of origin again? The words from Anglo French. Uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's Cypre and Cypre. Um, Cypre, C Y P R E S, Cypre. That is correct. Okay. Um, so. This is our, okay, we're, we're at round 23. So this will be our last round. And if both of you spell correctly in this round, we'll declare you co-champions. So let's get started. Speller 61. Your word is liriodendron. Um, could I have everything? Liriodendron is um, the only pronunciation. It's New Latin from Greek, and it means a genus of North American and Asiatic trees with four lobed, smooth shining leaves and a large greenish flowers resembling tul tulips. The botanist dedicated her life to studying the liriodendron. Can I have the origin? Liriodendron is New Latin from Greek. Uh, can I have the part of speech? Liriodendron is New Latin from Greek. Uh, can I have the part of speech? Liriodendron is it's not. Uh, can you read the word again? Liriodendron. Liriodendron. L-I-R-I-O-D-E-N-D-R-O-N. That is correct. Thank you. Your word is Fontainebleau. Um, Fontainebleau, can I have all the information, please? The word came from Fontainebleau or Fontainebleau. Um, it's a noun. It's from a French geographical name, and it's a commune in northern France. Patrick went for a day trip to Fontainebleau from Paris. Does it come from French bleu, meaning like blue? No. Does it come from French fountain, meaning fountain? I don't see that here. Uh, can you repeat all the information, please? Yes. Um, the word can be pronounced Fontainebleau or Fontainebleau. It's a noun. It's my French geographical name. It's um, a commune in northern France. The sentence is, Patrick went for a day trip to Fontainebleau from Paris. Well, what's the part of speech again? It's a noun. Fontainebleau. F-O-N-T-A-I-N-E-B-L-E-A-U. Fontainebleau. That is correct. Good job. Oh, thank you. Congratulations, both of you. Great job. Thank you. OK. Um, yeah, congratulations, both of you. Um, after 23 rounds, um, we'll declare both of you co-champions. So Speller 61 and the Speller 116, uh, Ditya and Yash, um, both of you will be our co-champions for the Spell Pundit Senior B. Um, with that, both of you will get $1,100 in cash prize as well as uh, a trophy. So great job, spelled a lot of really hard words today. And um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Congrats, thank you. you yeah, congrats. Congratulations. Great job, guys. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Dave and the rest of the spellers, congratulations. It was tough B. <laughs> thank you, judges, too. A lot of work behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the long B, <laughs> for working so many hours, everyone.
Yeah, thank you all the judges. It really went well. Thank you.